God bless you, God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My name is Apostle to Peter Daniel. You are watching me right now in Heaven and Hell Life program uh, under the school of Umbre uh, under the umbrella of School of Heaven. Uh, I just posted a video right now on YouTube stating on the first hood of Sunday worship. I was explaining and exposed the video whereby a Catholic Pope I issue and uh, a verdict that every man to convert from Saturday worship into Sunday worship and uh, there are some people who be who are calling me to ask me questions where like sir how can this be possible that uh, are you saying that uh, those who are going to Sunday uh, church will go to her I said yes the reason is because once it comes from man and it's not from the scripture it's not from the ideology of god it's from Mavit, who a man who say that he has audacity and power to change the word of god the pope who said that he has that nobody can question him that he has grace and power to change what the bible says so if he's coming from such a person then i said there's nothing else than anyone who obeys such a law we end up in hell so somebody were asking me on the comment group and said sir we needed a uh, part two of this video listen to me very well this is not the time to argue no this is not the time to talk about things i am not here to defend the sabbath service or whatsoever i myself i am a sunday i was born as a sunday worshiper but there's something wrong when i begin to read my scriptures and i begin to look for sunday worship i couldn't find the whole bible from genesis to revelation i couldn't find a single verse who talks about worshiping on sunday so that thing alone begin to give me an issue and concern that where is a slot in of sunday in the bible so that leads me to go and meet one of my pastor and i say sir I, I, we are worshiping on Sunday. We're supposed to worship. Or when, when, when is the Sabbath day? My pastor said the real Sabbath day is on Saturday. Then I said, Why are we not worshiping on Sunday? He said, Well, because Jesus Christ resurrected on the Sunday. See, that is why we are worshiping on Sunday. Then I agreed at that time. But when I grew up in the knowledge of God, I, this thing began to disturb me the more. The more I get close to God and this thing, it led me to serious prayers. There was a time I, I converted to, I convert into Saturday worship. Then later I go back again into Sunday worship. Then later I went back to Saturday. That was when I received a revelation from God that commanded me that I have to go back to the Sabbath Saturday worship. That is when I go back there. Now, listen to me. I am not trying to prove out to you that there is a particular special day that you have to observe and serve God. We know that every day is for the Lord. We know. But let us biblically prove in some point. Because there are some people who have some questions they want to ask. They have some things in their mind that's going on in their heart. They wanted to ask some questions. But the point is that let's prove it from the scriptures. What did the Bible talk about? What did the Bible say about uh, the Sabbath and the Sunday worship? We are going to look at it. I want to explain carefully, carefully, you know, and in a clearer, in a clearer form, so that those people who believe that they are going to make it to heaven, even while worshiping on Sunday, they might see themselves even in the Bible. In the Bible, let's look at Genesis chapter chapter two. We are starting from verse two. Okay, let's start from verse one, so that. We can get up the full understanding. It says so the heaven and earth were finished, and all the host of them. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. On the seventh day. When is the seventh day? The seventh day is on Saturday. Amen. The seventh day is on Saturday. When is the first day? The first day is on Sunday. The second day is Monday. 
so the seventh day is on saturday and and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and god bless that's the first verse three now and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that is it because that in it he had rested from all his work which god created and made now the first thing is that the bible said and god sanctified that day which means that when god sanctified it means that he makes it special he makes it important so which means that this law is the first law that first came to to human practice it's not among the ten commandments is the first one that first come before the ten commandment begin to come before all that rules from moses he begin to attach you know be, be, before we begin to attach this law into them this one has come as a day of service unto god he rested and he sanctified for all man to worship him at that day so what happened there next about the worship on the sabbath day we are going to be looking at the scriptures one by one so that we can have the full understanding of what is happening then what is sunday meant for i'm going to explain to you so that you can also understand what sunday meant for by the grace of god if you look at matthew chapter 12 it said therefore it is lawful to do good on the sabbath day now what i want to bring out there is this jesus christ is the one talking in that place when jesus christ came he said something he said i am not yet to abolish the law i am not yet to cancel the law i am not yet to put an end to the law he said listen to me i am not yet to do all these things i am yet to fulfill them now when the a part of the israelite practice a part of israelite practice of serving god as a special day or a sabbath day jesus christ when he came on earth him too he served god on that day he too he served god on that day he was going to the sabbath he was going to the taban uh, to the to the tabernacle to the capanio capenia too he was going there every day to uh, on the sabbath day especially to go and worship god so he was observing it but there is one thing that jesus christ came on earth to correct and is this he said something he said therefore it is lawful to do good on on the sabbath in those days jewish people are not doing good on the sabbath day when they see that you are in you are in need and that need in need will cause them to do some stress work they will leave you it's better you die it's better you die than you do anything so they will leave it so for that reason jesus christ said something he said you are not supposed to do that that was the reason why the pharisee was trying to challenge jesus christ that why are you eating on the sabbath day why do you allow your disciple to eat on the sabbath day and he was telling them you are making mistakes god told that god told you to worship god to worship him on the sabbath yes but you are taking it to a stream on the sabbath sabbath day is a day whereby you're supposed even to do more good work than anything sabbath day is even a day that you're supposed to do more wonderful work than anything i'm not talking about reworking of hard working i'm talking about the work of god the good work that is that day but they are misinterpreting the the law that they have to they have to do this they have to do that they have to do it. so jesus christ was trying to clear it for them and tell them that listen to me you can eat on the sabbath day you can help on the sabbath day that's why intentionally jesus have to what he has to help people in their presence heal the sick because to them healing the sick on the sabbath is wrong meanwhile is the day of the law is the day that people even have to cry unto god and heal the people amen in mark chapter 2 verse 27 said the sabbath was made for man not man for the sabbath 
What does it mean? I'm trying to put an interpretation of all of these things. I want to know where Sunday come in. I want to explain it to you accordingly. Because we have to find out who exactly bring these things, this Sunday worship into existence. We are, because the person who bring it into existence matters. Just as I usually tell people that, I tell people very well, I said, listen to me, the person who give naming, who name your child when your child was a baby, matters. It will determine the destiny of that child. It will determine what is going to happen to that child. Because that is a new foundational covenant. So we are also going to look at it. The person who funded Sunday worship matter. What caused it? I know I've shown you a video about the, uh, in the first in the first video. I've shown you a video already that claim it who do it. But let us biblically explain so that we can have the full understanding. Why does it have to be so? So now, Mark chapter 2, verse 27. He said, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made. The, in, the, in that statement, Jesus does not overrule Sabbath. He said, It was made for man. It's a day that a man should worship God. It's not a day of oppressions. It's not a day of persecutions. It's not a day of hunger. It's not a day of suffering. It's a day that you free willingly go to God's presence and give more honor in God's presence. Amen. You willingly go there in God's. So it's a day. That's why he said the Son of Man. Amen. He said it's not. It's, he said the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Just as the just as what the the same quotation, the way he said, for the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. That kind of logistic word was also given between woman and man. In First Corinthians chapter eleven, he said in verses. Uh, in verses uh, 8 for the man is not of the woman but the woman of the of the man you see that now neither was the man created for the woman but the woman for the man so if you look at that language is exactly what he's trying to say there in this statement does it mean that the man should not marry again no he's trying to explain that the the man is the lord over what over the sabbath day now listen to me very, very well now we have to continue mark chapter 3 verse 4 he said then he said to them is it lawful on sabbath to do good or to do evil to save life or to keep but they kept silent he was trying to teach them a kind of how to worship god he should have told them that well the day you are serving god is wrong he should have told the disciple that listen to me when I died, serve me on the Sunday. He should have said that. But he didn't say that. He was trying to even teach them how to serve God in an appropriate way. This is our Lord Savior himself. Don't let us start interpreting and giving some, some explanation on what is not going on. Now, Let's look at what uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 5 says. Luke chapter 6 verse 5. And he said to them, the son of man is also Lord over the Sabbath. The son of man is Lord over the Sabbath. The son of, of man is Lord of the Sabbath. This is Lord of the Sabbath. When somebody says he's a Lord over something, it means he's the owner of that worship. His meat is the owner of that thing. When God says something, he says he rested and he sanctified it. What God sanctified from the creation cannot be cancelled. Just as the rules of God from the beginning cannot be cancelled or override or overrooted or over removed. It cannot. It cannot. 
So I want this is the life of Jesus. Throughout the Jesus life on earth, he was going to the temple. He was going to the uh, synagogue on the Sabbath day, which is on Saturday. He was going there to worship God, to serve God on that day. He doesn't miss it. He was teaching them the word of God on that day. Then that is the life of Jesus Christ. Then something happened again. When Jesus died, Jesus also kept the law of the Sabbath. He died on Friday. He resurrected on Sunday. He should have resurrected on Saturday. But he rested on that time. He's seen the process of resting. That's why he resurrected on Sunday, according to what is in the Bible. Amen. Now, that is the life of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ is on earth, he was observing Sabbath. That's what we want to hear. Then the disciples, which is the apostles, are they observing Sabbath? Is it biblical proving that they are even going to the Sabbath service? So we have to go into it and uh, read what it says whether they are actually meeting on that day let's look at uh out of apostle chapter 13 verse 14 out of apostle chapter 13 verse 14 but when they departed from perga they came to antioch in pisidia and went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and sat down they went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and sat down you can be open your bible the way as as i'm calling it so that you can go and follow me in the spirit only because if you don't understand it it will be difficult that's why i'm scripturally opening it to you they read it you see that now he said let me read again but when they departed from Paga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law, after the reading of the law, and the prophet, the rulers of synagogue, sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, says, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. He was preaching on the Sabbath day. Who are the people who went there? When you go to that verse 13, you see Paul was the one who went there. He preached, he went there to the Sabbath, he don't Sabbath himself. Then when we look at uh, verse uh, 42 to 45, that is uh, out of Apostles chapter 13, 42 to 44. 42. And when the Jews went, were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentile back, uh, besought that this word might be preached to them the next Sabbath. This word might be preached to them the next sabbath now when the congregation was broken up many of the jewish and religious protestants followed paul and barnabas who speaking to them persuade them to continue in the grace of god you see that and and that's for uh, 44 now verse 44 now he said and the next sabbath day came almost the whole city together together to uh, sit all city together to hear the word of God on the next Sabbath. So they were observing Sabbath after the call of They were observing Sabbath. So I don't understand where it will turn it. Will. Uh, it. So again, to look at places here. Uh, this, this, the, the post on the Sabbath day, they were all going there at that time. I don't want, uh, we have a lot of proof here, but in quick one, when what does Sunday does? What did they do on Sunday? What did they do on Sunday? I will tell you what they do in Sunday. They use Sunday to break bread. 
when they go to Sabbath in the morning, they will have been there from Friday night to Monday to Sunday to Sabbath day to, to Saturday, worship God after worshiping God on Sunday on Sunday, Saturday. They will also come again and gather. Listen to me, those who come to Sabbath worship are believers and unbelievers. In as much they believe they are they are Christian, they can be Christian, they might be Jewish, they all come on the Sabbath day. But on Sunday, the gathering of Sunday is mainly for believers, not for unbelievers, because it's a day that is dedicated for sharing bread. I'm going to prove it for you in the Bible how they were vain it in the Bible. I will explain it to you. I'm just trying to explain the clue for you. The Saturday worship is for both unbelievers and believers. They come together to worship God Almighty. We pray, probably in the process, they can repent, you know, and get converted. But Sunday, this the Sunday evening, they gather only in the evening. On Sunday evening, what they do on Sunday evening, let me just explain it to you, is this. They come to come and break bread. That is to eat only communion. Only communion. That's why I told people those who are eating only communion in the morning, they are eating nonsense. Because only communion should be eaten in the evening with publican proof. That's part of a lot of error going on in the body of Christ right now. So now they come together, believers only, non believer. This one is a secretive believer only. They gather, they come together in humility to in, in honor to God Jesus, to Jesus Christ, as a remembrance of Jesus Christ's revelations on the first day, which is on Sunday. Because Jesus said it is the only thing Jesus Christ told the disciple that do this in remembrance of me. So they, they repeatedly do it on the sunday on the evening on sunday they gather together and the what they break bread only believers not unbeliever let's prove it from the scriptures let's open our bible to act of apostle 20 verse 7 20 verse 7 act of apostle 20 verse 7 as we are looking at the lifestyles they live he said, and upon the first day of week, when the disciples came together to break bread. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. Which is the first day? On first day is Sunday. Sunday is the first day. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continue his speech on the middle of the night. You see that now? So this one are believers. He said, upon the first, when the disciples came together, they didn't say the people, now they didn't say the Jewish people, no. The disciples were the one who come together to break bread. The church was the one who come together to break bread. This one is not an unbeliever matter. It's a eating, it's a communion. It's, it's, a, it's a covenant renewal of Jesus Christ. Covenant between you and Jesus Christ. Renewal that they come to do on the first day. That is on that one. That's based on that one. Then another thing where we see that the gather again on Sunday was uh, open to First Corinthians chapter sixteen verse uh, verse two. I'm going to explain to you here because people are not getting First Corinthians sixteen verse two. He said, "Now let me read verse one so that you can understand." Now concerning the collection for the saint, for the saint. Concern, now concerning the collections for the saint, as I have given order to the church of Galantia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, that is Sunday, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, and there be no gathering when I come. So what he's trying to say there is that he's talking to the church that when they gather on Sunday, because they must gather, they usually gather to come out. It's only believers. So it, the announcement is making here, you cannot announce it on a public general announcement. That is why I tell people that those who are making announcement of financial offering in a crusade, in a revival, is an error. So he can only say this thing to them because they were taught. They understand the scriptures. So if they were taught, he was telling them, upon that day, give an offering, arrange an offering for me when I come. 
So I don't know when you come here. That's what is it that no begin that. It's not when it, it now come that you now begin to call people and say, ah, come, come, come. Uh, call letter to come and gather for Apostle Paul. No, he said you should have gathered it on the first week, on the first day of this week. Then when I come, I collect them. Now we have a lot of proof, but let me quickly because of our time. Now listen to me very well. It's a very clear message without any argument. Let us make it clear and clear. This is the point I want to bring out. The lifestyles of the apostles, it from Jesus to the Israelite, I mean from, from the Father to the Israelite to Jesus to the apostles, they were all observing Sabbath service. And they and they still begin to observe Sunday in the evening for breaking of bread. The Christian that follow the that, that follow them that follow the the, the 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 apostles all the Christian that brought out from them they were all following it too. They were following Sabbath service, followed by the next 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 generation Christian that following them. All of them were following Sabbath service, including the the old powerful ministers of God like Martin Luther or all those ministers of God that God used very well. All of them were observing Sabbath until the pope came i don't know maybe it's uh, uh -oh. and the pope came and uh, i don't know and when he came he said listen to me nobody can change his verdict that he has power to change the bible and he said as from now as forth you are not to worship on saturday anymore you are to worship on sunday the Christian of those days, they were not happy with us valid and they refused. Some strong one, they refused. All the strong one that refused, they slaughtered them. They died for the sake of not, not worshiping God on Sunday. They refused, those who refused were key. So they have no choice than to obey or to eliminate the, the worship of Sabbath, which is Saturday, and they begin to worship on Sunday. The point I want to bring out to you is this they covered the secret for years, but God began to expose them. No wonder Catholic people usually say something in their court. It will say the Christian in the old world did not know that we made them to worship. On Sunday but we didn't understand we come across that we didn't understand until we we are uh, <clears throat> until we got the full understanding right now let me tell you something I know you have your own excuse that uh, these are reasons but this is the point why is God saying that we have to worship on Saturday you say okay the Bible you say that uh, Jesus Christ has resurrected this and this and this yes I didn't I'm not arguing with you I am not arguing with you, but this is the point I want to tell you. Among the law that Jesus canceled, that canceled, Sabbath day was not among them. Jesus came to cancel the law of blood offering, killing of animal to sacrifice for, for forgiveness. Jesus came to cancel that. Jesus came to cancel a secret hidden act that people show he canceled those things. Jesus came to cancel all the ritual made on the altar. He canceled them. Jesus came to cancel all the killing. Maybe you commit a sin, you have to kill, you have to be killed. Those who are committing fornication and adultery, they will have to stone them to death. He canceled all those laws. But all the remaining law, like Ten Commandments, other other laws, like you must not commit, you must not co uh, 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 collect your neighbor wife, you must not do, you must not steal, you must not all those things. They are still existing. They are not yet cancelled. You have to understand what Jesus Christ did, came to do. If Jesus is cancelling the old old law, then I have right to go and marry my 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 sister. They have right to go and marry my in-laws. If Jesus is canceling the old laws, the law, everything, if he's canceling every law from Moses, if he cancels them, it means that incept, lesbianism, gay will be accepted. But because he because that was where the law was stated, it was not stated in the New Testament. Amen. So now 
there are some law that was not stated in the new that was stated only on the old so it is not all law that god cancelled there are some law that is still valid it's only the law of sacrifice of blood and the one that can injure humanity that jesus cancelled You say you are the. You, nah, nah, that, that, that's on that point. Are you listening to me? That's on that point. I want to tell you for the fact that Sunday worship, forget what, forget your. No, forget about your reasons of uh, worshiping on Sundays. Forget your reasons. For the fact that the law comes from Catholic. For the fact that the law came from Catholic is enough for you to know that if you obey it, you go to hell. Because Catholic is not a church, it's an idol worshiping center. It's not a church. Anything that comes out from it is not acceptable. Once it is from Catholic, okay, let's accept whether Sunday worship is, is good or not. Once it comes from there, don't obey it. If you obey it, you are, you are going to end up in hell. What it came from, anything that came from Catholic, you should know. Because Catholic is a gateway to hell. It's a gateway to hell. So anything that comes from there, know me very well that when you obey it, you are on your way to hellfire. And they are the one that initiates Sunday. And the reason why they do that, that's why I show you the clip there. So that you can watch it. You can go to my first video. Where I talk about the Sabbath or Sunday. You will see that. For those who are not, are not, are not, uh, have not watched it, watch it, then watch one secondly, because this one is the second part. May the Lord bless you, Jesus. If you still have any question to ask, ask me. Ask me. I will answer it by God's grace. But this is the truth or fact of the matter. I carefully pray about it. And I got the will of God. I know your mind is like, well, everybody, every day is of the Lord now that there should not be special day because of what Paul said in Colossians. You are right. What Paul said in Colossians, you are the one that you don't understand. It was, it was, there was something is defined, but it's no time for me to explain for you now. The point is that if what you think Paul was saying was actually what Paul was saying, why did Paul himself have to observe somebody? Why did Paul himself observe somebody? Why did the early church, all of them, were observing somebody? Will he tell them that they should not observe it? What, what, if what he's saying is they should not observe it, then Sunday worship will have start from there. So it's your interpretation was wrong about that. So the point is this. I am not saying anything, but I'm telling you that if this thing is from the Bible, there's nothing you can change about it. We know, don't, I, I don't argue with it, that every day is of the Lord, yes. From Monday, from a Sunday to Monday to, to store Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as all of them they are made is for God. We as a new generation believers, we as a recommend a new believer, like a, a new commandment believer, the follower of Jesus Christ, we are to worship God every day. Yes. But the special day that God requested have to observe. And the way you think you have to observe it is wrong. Because many of you will say that uh, uh, it means that we cannot eat on that day, we cannot eat on. No, that's not how to do it. There is a clarification on that point. I won't say more than that. Because it's two details. Please share this to everyone. If 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 you are seeing it for the first time, just subscribe so that you can receive more revelation about this things. May the Lord bless you and be with you. God bless you. My name will be Apostle Peter Daniel. May the Lord be with you. Bye. Shalom. To come and read from the official writings of the, as they call it, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. Listen to this. These are the unadulterated statements from popes 
and other Roman Catholic leaders. Our beloved father, Pope Leo XIII, said, We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Our beloved father, Pope Gregory VII, said, One, that the Roman Church was founded by the Lord alone. Two, that the Roman Pontiff alone is justly called universal. Three, that he alone can depose bishops or restore them. Four, that all princes should kiss the feet of the Pope alone. Five, that it is lawful for him to depose emperors. Six, that his sentence ought not to be reviewed by anyone, and he alone can review the decisions of all. Seven, that he ought to be judged by no one. Eight, that the Roman Church never erred, nor will it, according to Scripture, ever err. I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who can prove to me from the Bible alone that I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such law in the Bible. It is a law of the Holy Catholic Church alone. The Bible says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Catholic Church says, No, by my divine power I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in a reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. T. N. Wright, CSSR, in a lecture at Hartford, Kansas, February 18, 1884. The Catholic Church for over 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her divine mission, changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. The Catholic Mirror, September 23, 1893. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea A.D. 336, transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Peter Geierman, The Convert's Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, 2nd edition, 1910, page 50. Question, have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer, had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Stephen Keenan, A Doctrinal Catechism, page 174. There is but one church on the face of the earth which has the power or claims power to make laws binding on the conscience, binding before God, binding under penalty of hell fire. For instance, the institution of Sunday. What right has any other church to keep this day? You answer by virtue of the third commandment. The papacy changed the fourth commandment and called it the third, which says... Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. But Sunday is not the Sabbath. Any schoolboy knows that. Sunday is the first day of the week. I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone 
who will prove by the Bible alone that Sunday is the day we are bound to keep and no one has called for the money. It was the Holy Catholic Church that changed the day of rest from Saturday, the seventh day, to Sunday, the first day of the week. T. Enright, CSSR, in a lecture delivered in 1893. Thank you, Bishop.